So in this video, I'm going to talk about the Fermi function, f of e. Typically, it's it's written as f of e. Sometimes there'll be a subscript, sometimes there won't. I don't really like writing it with a subscript, and they're all referring to the same thing. Um, okay, so what is the Fermi function, and why do we care about it? Well, remember that the goals, uh, our goals in doing semiconductor physics were we wanted to find the number of electrons or the number of free electrons that could move around, the number of charge carriers in a semiconductor, we wanted to find out where were they, or where are these electrons, and we wanted to find out how are they moving. And so the Fermi function is one thing that's gonna help us to answer this first question. Because if we wanted to calculate the number of electrons, you might say, well, if we're a sane person, uh, why don't we just count them? Why don't we just count the number of electrons? And this is actually exactly what we do. So if you're a sane person that also happens to know quantum mechanics, then you could say, uh, well, yeah, we can do this. But in quantum mechanics, it's much more convenient to work with states. Uh, than the electrons themselves. And this just basically has to do with uh, the ways in which it's easiest to solve the Schrodinger equation. But essentially, uh, what we want to do is find the number of states and then multiply that by the percentage of states that are occupied or the percentage of states that have an electron in them. So have an electron in them. And we actually calculated the number of states before. We found this function g of e, uh, the density of states function, or dos function, uh, density of states. And so all we need to know now is the percentage of those states occupied. And we would like to know the percentage of those states at a given energy because we've got the density of states in terms of energy. So if we could multiply the density of states by the percentage of states that are occupied at a given energy, that gives us the number of electrons with a given energy. And that's awesome. That's exactly what we wanted to answer. And you might say, well, Jordan, don't we care about the total number of electrons? So why are we meandering about with this energy here? Um, and we can find the total number of electrons just by integrating over all the energy. So if we've got this probability or this uh, percentage of electrons at a given energy and we integrate it over all possible energies or we sum it, um, if we're being more precise, then we can get the total number of electrons. And this function, P of E, the percentage of states occupied, this is exactly the same thing as the Fermi function. In fact, that's, that's how it's defined. The Fermi function just gives us the percentage of states that are occupied at a given energy. So for example, if we say that I've got five states at a given energy E naught, so I'll just draw them here as five buckets, because that's the, that's, these are buckets, I swear. Um, and the Fermi function at this energy, or the, prob the percentage of states occupied is 0.2, uh, or 20%, then we're going to have elect an electron in 20% of these buckets or in just one bucket, one fifth. Uh, that's just the same thing as 20%. If we've got instead that our density of states, so g of uh, e1, let's say, uh, is 10 states. So one, two, three, four, five. I hope this is actually 10. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then our Fermi function at the energy is, say, 0.1, then only one of these buckets is going to have an electron in it. We're only going to have 
10% of these states filled. If our Fermi function was 0.2, if our Fermi function was 0.2, then we'd have two of these states filled. If it was 0.3, we'd have three of these states filled, and so on and so forth. So enough mucking around. What is the Fermi function? How can we write it down? Um, well, here, I'll, I'll just give it to you. The derivation is extremely painful um, if you don't know a lot of thermodynamics. Um, but it's it has this form. So it's 1 over 1 plus e to the energy minus this constant called the Fermi energy divided by the Boltzmann co constant times the temperature. Now, this part, at a given temperature, this is just a number. Uh, this is just a number, and it's got units of energy. And we know that EF, we've, we've calculated this. Uh, we can calculate this number. So everything in here is just numbers, except for this one variable, which I'm actually going to draw in, in red so that it's absolutely clear. This is the one variable in this entire function. This is the energy. And so this is the function. What does it look like? Uh, well, if you want to know what it looks like, it's helpful to draw it at some temperature t. Um, so let's just assume for now that uh, t is room temperature, so about 300 Kelvin. Uh, then since I've memorized this, I know that kt is about 26 milli electron volts. And so what does this function look like at various or uh, as we as we change e, uh, well, let's call this position e f because that's I mean that that's probably going to be special, right? Um, so what does it look like when e is much much less than e f? So or when say e is equal to zero, for example. Uh, well, then this equation just looks like one over one plus e to the minus e f over k t. And since I've done some semiconductor physics, I know that this EF is usually like 0.5 electron volts. And 0.5 divided by 0.026 uh, in this exponential term, this is going to be very close to zero. So our Fermi function is approximately one at energy is much smaller than the Fermi energy. Uh, what about when the energy is equal to the Fermi energy? So E is equal to EF. Well, then this function just becomes 1 over 1 plus E to the 0 over KT because E is equal to EF, so E minus EF is just equal to 0. Or 1 over, uh, 1, over 1 plus 1, which is just equal to 1 half. So when E is equal to EF, our Fermi function drops to one half. And now what about when E is much larger than EF? Uh, well, we've got uh, one over one plus E to the some large number, let's say, I don't know, like two electron volts, for example, uh, divided by KT, uh, which is 0.026 electron volts. This is a very large number. Uh, because when we take the exponential of some like number like 10, 20, it's it's huge. Um, so one over a huge number is just approximately zero. So the Fermi function, when e is much greater than ef, uh, is going to fall to zero. And so we've got three points, so we can kind of fudge it. Uh, we can say, okay, well, it's going to look something like this. So this is what the Fermi function looks like as a function of energy. Now let me just erase some of this. Uh, what about when we change the temperature? What happens to this function? What, what, what does it look like then? So we said that this was about, um, this was for T is about, I don't know, 300 Kelvin. 300 Kelvin. What happens when we reduce the temperature? Well, let's reduce it to something absurdly small. Let's say, what if, what if the temperature is equal to zero? Then the Fermi function is just one over one plus e to the e minus ef over zero. And you might say, well, hold on a minute. <laughs> Jordan, you can't do that. You've got a, a zero, one over zero in an exponential. That's nonsense. Um, 
But uh, to that, I would answer, yes, I can do that uh, because this is a this is a ratio. So if you wanted, you could take a limit. But essentially, um, when E now is less than the Fermi energy, this is one over one plus E to the some constant number, which is a negative. So it's some negative number divided by zero, which is just negative infinity. Uh, approximately so this just becomes 1 over 1 plus 0 because e to the minus infinity is 0 so this just equal to 1 well that's basically what we said before so uh, approximately 1 except as the temperature approaches 0 uh, f of f when uh, e is less than ef is exactly 1 and that's kind of cool uh, what about when e is greater than ef well, then we've got the same situation. We've got 1 over 1 plus e to the, now it's a positive number, so some positive number divided by 0, which is e to the positive infinity. So instead of pos negative infinity, it's positive infinity. And 1 over e to the infinity is just 1 over infinity, which is 0. And I hope there's no mathematicians in the audience who I'm giving a heart attack right now. So the Fermi function immediately drops. So if t is equal to 0 degrees Kelvin, it's 1 for e less than ef and 0 for e greater than ef. And so this is the temperature equal to 0 degrees Kelvin. And so we can kind of get an intuitive sense for what's happening. As we raise the temperature, the Fermi function is kind of getting smoothed out. So if we were to say t is equal to 1,000 Kelvin, the Fermi function might look something like this, but it always crosses through this one point, this one half point when E is equal to EF.